This is breaking news. Right now, Governor Phil. Have our support. Uh, we're just so welcome to welcome the governor, the lieutenant governor, our county executive, and the treasurer here in Fairland, as well as many other dignitaries that I know the governor will recognize. Uh, the governor has been a great supporter of our borough. He's always been in easy contact with us, and we greatly appreciate his support. Uh, just one quick story. We had in, in Fairlawn during COVID, we actually had more businesses open than closed. And we had a lot of new businesses that needed financial support that didn't originally qualify. Sent a quick message to the governor, him and his team reached out, and they helped support our local businesses here in Fairlawn. I also want to say congratulations on the recent bond upgrade. Uh, we're very excited to have a few here in Fairlawn. Recently became a AAA bond upgrade. And uh, we know the fa <laughs> that's it. <laughs> we know uh, the, the state will be uh, following suit. And uh, we're really happy to and excited to hear any news that helps with support uh, for all our residents. So with that, I well, want to welcome uh, Governor Murphy. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, Kurt. It is great to be back in Fairlawn, um, a community. Lisa probably knows this better than anything because she was the mayor when I first started kicking the tires on running for governor. But uh, I've been here a lot, and I love it, including we did a 5K, which feels like five years ago, but it wasn't. Uh, great to be back. Um, love it here. Thank you, Mayor, for your leadership, your deputy mayor, Christina Cutrone, another dear friend. Uh, members of the Borough Council, always so gracious in welcoming us here uh, and today in the, in the Borough Chambers. Also honored, as you said, to be joined four days in a row, Sheila. We have to stop meeting like this. Our incredible Lieutenant Governor Sheila Y. Oliver is in the house. Um, we don't do a lot of, yeah, let's go. Let's go. Um, the treasurer and I don't do a lot of events together, but when we do them together, they are meaningful. And today is, is that ilk. So treasurer Liz Moyo is here and she and her team. This is, uh, if, you're a, if you're an accountant leading up to April 15th, it's the busy season. If you're the treasurer of the state of New Jersey and it's leading up to the budget speech on Tuesday, it's very busy season. So thank you for coming out. The extraordinary county executive, Jim Tedesco is with us. Jim, thank you for everything you do. Um, Lisa, the aforementioned Assemblywoman Lisa Swain, great to, uh, great to be with you, Lisa. A guy, two seats to your left, who looks very familiar to me, oh, just kidding. <laughs> Commissioner Tom Sullivan, one of the great guys, and great, yeah, uh, and a great labor leader in addition to being a terrific commissioner. And Terry Tucker's in the house, Terry, come on. <laughs> Before I uh, jump into why we're here today, a couple of topics that are a little bit off topic and Kurt has alluded to both of them. First, Ukraine, uh, just to reiterate the horror of this war of choice. Uh, Russia, sadly for the Russian people, is led by a thug uh, who runs a kleptocracy uh, and is murdering innocent Ukrainians by, sadly, it looks by the hundreds, especially over the past couple of days. There's just no excuse for this. New Jersey will stand uh, strongly by the Ukrainian people and by Ukraine. We'll fly their flags. We'll take the refugees. I sent a letter to President Biden yesterday saying, just as we did with the Afghan refugees, we're raising our hand to take any in New Jersey. We have among the largest population um, of any American state. We're just under 75,000. I think only New York, California, and Pennsylvania is slightly ahead of us. Um, the, the Ukrainian Orthodox North American Church headquarters are in New Jersey. Uh, my wife and I attended a vigil the other night. So on behalf of Sheila and, and, uh, and Liz and the rest of our government, we will stand tall. I signed an executive order yesterday uh, which instructs, orders all of state government to sever any ties with any Russian entities. I want to give Paul Sarlo, uh, Bergen County Zone, a big shout out for sponsoring a bill that would have a similar effect, but in our investments, in our, through our pension funds. Um, we will not waver. We will stay at this. We're, we're, we're working, and my wife Tammy is a part of this. We're working in government to work with other organizations. The, the Consul General from Ukraine, I spoke to their ambassador a couple of days ago just before she sat with First Lady Jill Biden for the uh, State of the Union speech. We're trying to get humanitarian goods uh, over there. I'd like to send tanks. I hope somebody else is doing that and 
uh, anti-aircraft and all the other stuff, that, uh, weapons that are being delivered that's above New Jersey's pay grade. Um, but we will stand firm. And let me just also make one other point. I, I, we, we're not here to discuss Ukraine, even though it may feels, feel that way. I think if you abstain, if you're silent right now, you're complicit, period. There's blood on your hands. So I don't know if it's true or not. I, I don't think the New York Times would have reported it if it weren't true, but there's no source. But apparently the Chinese uh, asked uh, Putin to hold off on the, they were given details of the war so they knew that you know Holocaust survivors would be bombed by the Russians just think about that for a second they went through hell once they're not going through hell again but the Chinese knew what was going to happen and all their ask was to postpone the beginning of the war until after the Olympics you know you got to be kidding me my dad told me the story growing up I think it was Sacco and Vanzetti, those are the two names that ring a bell, where there was a bank robbery where the guys who went in the bank had guns and killed at least somebody. Um, the driver was outside, unarmed, never went in the bank, was also sent to the electric chair. That's what we're talking about. If you're silent, if you're abstaining, right now you are guilty as hell. We cannot let people who are silent and abstaining get away with it, never mind Vladimir Putin. Now another off topic and a happier note, as Kurt alluded to, especially with the treasurer with Sheila and me today, have to address yesterday's upgrade of our state's credit rating by Moody's. This is proof positive that our efforts to restore New Jersey's fiscal house are working. This work of rebuilding trust in our state's financial future has not been easy. Let's not forget that we inherited a state four years ago that had received 11 consecutive credit rating downgrades under the prior administration. Liz and her team deserve a huge amount of credit and thanks for the way they have been managing our finances day in and day out. And I also want to thank the legislature for all the work that we have done together. Sheila, you'd want me to do that and uh, it is absolutely the case to get us to this point. We're getting New Jersey back to the space that we used to live in. I was saying to Kurt, I looked at the trajectory of upgrades and downgrades in the last you know, 30 years have been tragic. We were AAA, we were as highly rated as Fairlawn one time. And I hope one day again we can be. Um, we used to be a state recognized and respected for sound finances, smart budgets, and being a safe investment. And we're getting back to being that state again, I'm proud to say. This is, listen, I'm thrilled about it, but it's one upgrade. Uh, so we still have a lot of work to, to do to undo the decades of downgrades that have stretched across administrations, frankly, of both parties. I'd say that that work starts now, but the truth is we haven't stopped since we day one when we took office and we will continue to work at this. So again, Liz, congratulations. And as we always do after we present the budget, you and I will sit with the rating agencies um, and walk them through. Now, at long last, for the reason that we're all here, 45 years ago, one of my predecessors and a, a dear friend who's since passed, Governor Brendan Byrne delivered to New Jerseyans the first ever direct property tax relief provided by the Homestead Rebate Program. But over the ensuing years, inconsistent funding and constantly changing rules have led many to never really fully know whether they qualified for a rebate, how much it would be, or when it would arrive. The time has come to recognize that continuing to rewrite and rewrite the Homestead program renders its meaning to more and more families meaningless. Continuing along this path is no longer tenable. So in my budget address this coming Tuesday, I will formally put forward a renewed commitment to direct property tax relief to our households, regardless, by the way, of whether they own or rent, a total of $900 million for nearly 1.8 million homeowners and renters. We are calling this the Anchor Property Tax Relief Program because every good program needs an acronym. Anchor formally stands for Affordable New Jersey Communities for Homeowners and Renters. I like that, I have to say. <laughs> but in reality, reality, we want this to mean lasting relief that keeps families in their homes. They want relief that will allow them to anchor themselves in the communities they love, just like here in Fairland. Through Anchor, some 1.15 million homeowners with incomes of up to $250,000 will qualify for direct property tax relief. Additionally, 
more than 600,000 renters with incomes up to $100,000 will also be eligible for direct relief to offset the rent increases that they've been facing um, over the past years. For homeowners, relief this year will average nearly $700. For renters, it will be up to $250. Now, with the average property tax bill in New Jersey just under $10,000, 700 bucks is over 7% reduction in property taxes. That, th those words have never been spoken in the past three decades. Over the next two years, this is what I feel like I'm in the Ginsu knife commercial. Wait, there's more. <laughs> over the next two years, we will continue to invest in Anchor so it meets the levels of relief promised back in 2007. Put another way, Anchor will represent the first time in nearly 20 years that we will fully fund direct property tax relief. So that $900 million two years from now is $1.5 billion in direct property tax relief. This is a little bit reminiscent of the school funding formula that when we inherited and started uh, when Sheila and I got here had been unfunded for seven uh, for the previous eight years. So we are on, in the midst of a seven year program. The budget next week will be year five out of seven to fully fund our public schools at record levels on my head. It's also, I think, a little reminiscent of our pension obligation, where we committed each of those years one-tenth more to get to what we promised we would do. We got there last year a year or two early. Um, I won't make news, but I suspect you'll f think it's good news when you hear it next Tuesday about pension payments in addition to school funding formulas. This is an, another unkept promise from the past. This is a formula, actually. The property tax rebate was supposed to be at levels uh, that it was only at for one year back in 2007. We have said on this one again, enough already. We're going to live up to, to our word. We're going to deliver what we said we would deliver, and we will re-earn trust now, not just in school funding or, or in pension payments, but now in property tax relief. And by the way, that $700 that on average you'll get this year, two years from now when we fully fund this thing, that number will be $1,150. So if a property tax bill on average stays at around 10% or God willing, we keep it under, the, that's an 11 or 12% reduction uh, in your property tax bill. More than 5 million New Jerseyans live in a household set to receive relief through Anchor. So this is relief that will provide greater protection from property taxes, and this is relief that will allow those folks to stay in their homes. It will make life right here, Kurt, for Fairlawn's middle-class families and seniors and those across the state more affordable. For a qualified homeowner right here in Fairlawn, for example, the impact of Anchor will be to kick the effective property tax impact back to what they paid in 2018 or maybe even earlier. I've, I've repeated often that New Jersey is the best state in America to live in and to raise a family. And Fairlawn is a wonderful representation of this belief. Strong public schools, tight-knit neighborhoods, effective county and local government. We don't want property taxes to force families out of great communities like this. I take great pride, I know Sheila joins me in all that our administration has done to invest in our schools and communities to offset the drivers of higher property taxes by taking some of the weight off of property taxpayers. And we have made strides even before today and even before this program. Our administration has presided over the lowest year-to-year -year increases in property taxes on record. But as I said in my State of the State address, I'm not going to be satisfied by merely slowing the rate of growth. While we continue this work, we will deliver direct relief to effectively undo years of property tax increases. I have to give a couple of shout-outs. One speaker, Craig Coughlin, who uh, Sheila and I sat with yesterday for his partnership in, four, in the 14 middle class and senior and working family tax cuts that we've enacted so far, as well as his fervent commitment to and focus on property tax relief. And then separately also exchanged good notes with new Senate President Nick Scuteri last night. I'm looking forward as well to working with him on this because I know that he shares our commitment to, to property tax relief 
across the board. I'll obviously have more to say about the Anchor Direct Property Tax Relief Program on Tuesday, but we couldn't wait, which is why we're here today. <laughs> I'm excited to start this new chapter of property tax relief. Homestead has had a good run, and we thank it for its service. But now is the time for greater and more permanent relief, and it's time we allow more families to drop anchor in their homes and communities. Thank you all again for hosting me, as always, so graciously. Please help me welcome my partner in government, as well as the Commissioner of the Department of Community Affairs, which is right in the middle of all this, the extraordinary Lieutenant Governor Sheila Y. Oliver. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be here in Fairlawn in the great county of Bergen. And uh, the county exec knows that I come from a big county, too, the county of Essex. And uh, we are always in competition with the county of Bergen. But you have a great county. I love your parks. Uh, you do a great job with community engagement in the county. And uh, you hold the record for having the most towns. Uh, and you certainly know that at DCA, we deal with all of them through our Division of Local Government Services, and at least it's good to see you and all of you. Um, one thing I'd, I'd like to say, when the governor, uh, uh, when, when, when Kurt made mention of the governor providing support to businesses in Fairlawn, um, I always knew the healthy small business uh, community you had here. Former Senator Bob Gordon uh, really familiarized me with Fairlawn, uh, with the uh, residential neighborhoods, et cetera. And when I needed a roof some years ago, he put me in touch with the Carlson brothers. And the Carlson brothers have been in Fairlawn probably close to 100 years. So anyone that knows them, let them know that roof is solid. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So I, I always, uh, when someone says fair lawn to me, I say Carlson Brothers. <laughs> but uh, I want to thank uh, the governor and Treasurer Moya and uh, the mayor and the council members for hosting us today. And it is no secret, uh, as Governor Murphy said, that the number one concern that our residents uh, express in New Jersey over and over again is the challenge in property taxes. And uh, if you're in government long enough, as I have been, you develop a lot of relationships with our older adult population. And year after year, I can just think of getting phone calls from older adults that I've met through the years who ask me every year, Sheila, are we going to get a check? Are we going to get a check? And it heightens the consciousness of anyone uh, that works in Trenton that we have to deliver some relief to our homeowners. We all know here in Fairlawn you've got older adults who their homes are paid for, but they're living on fixed incomes and they have to figure out a way to pay those taxes. And this is what Governor Murphy's development um, of the anchor program is really a lot about. Uh, Governor, what I have to worry about, though, is once you um, are finished with this term, we're going to have to make certain that uh, we encourage the legislature and the next governor of the state to keep that trajectory going. But this is a great start and a great foundation. Uh, we know that we want our older adults to age in place. We don't want them to worry about getting that tax bill. and. Uh, we know that they're, they're very responsible, even though it's a struggle for them. Uh, I know many older adults, and I'm sure, sure it happens in town, they come to town hall personally to pay that tax bill. And uh, I think this will be good news for them. Um, the income thresholds that have been established in this program, I think, are great. Uh, anyone making under $250,000 a year is going to be eligible, and this relief is going to be very welcome for the number of families that the governor uh, alluded to. Um, the administration is pledged uh, to keep working class people in an affordability mode in this state, and we'll be doing a lot of things across the board to make sure that happens uh, for communities. 
and uh, at the Department of Citizen Services, you know that Governor Murphy appointed what, who we call our shared services czars. And uh, they're plat and glat, two former mayors. <laughs> and they're a tag team, and they've worked with hundreds and hundreds of municipalities across the state. And we have a significant number of shared services agreements. And we know that this, too, is going to contribute to a reduction in property taxes. Um, through the ZARS program, we're working to uh, explore and facilitate service sharing opportunities for municipalities. And f at one period of time in New Jersey, municipalities were reluctant and hesitant to do this, but now they're stepping up because they know it's the right thing to do. So, th Governor Murphy, thank you for leading us in the direction. This is another feather in the cap, in my opinion, in the Murphy administration in fulfilling commitments that are made. Uh, I've been a relic in Trenton for quite a long time. And not many promises made, you know, county executive are kept. So thank you, Governor Murphy. We're going to strike relic from the record, Sheila. <laughs> really well, well done. And the, and the shared services ours is a point I was going to make. I'm glad you made it. These two guys, one Democrat, one Republican, run up and down the state, and they work with DCA more than any other uh, branch of government, and they, they're really good, and they're really effective. A um, couple more speakers. Uh, next up to bat is our treasurer. And Liz, importantly, uh, when we first met, uh, was a legislator, um, and a darn good one. Uh, and that experience in both the legislative branch and now the executive branch for the past four plus years uh, gives her a perspective and, and a skill set that is really unique uh, in many respects. Sheila is the same way, right? So you, uh, that's experience I didn't have. Marlene, I think it's Marlene Caride, you two, those are the three, I think, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Doug Fisher, our agricultural. Um, so, so, and you can tell, it's very powerful. It's like being a, a mayor, having been a mayor and, and now being a legislator, Lisa, that adds a richness to your perspective that you otherwise wouldn't get. So those sort of multiple experiences, Tom's as a labor leader, gives him a perspective as a commissioner that is incredibly powerful. And there are lots of examples like it. 